We also want to welcome all of, the, all of you who are watching us on the internet, on Facebook, on YouTube, anywhere you are in the world. We, we welcome you and we're glad that you have joined us. And as I've said many times before, if you're anywhere within driving distance of our church here in Westchester, Illinois, we're about 10 miles west, southwest of downtown Chicago, uh, be sure to uh, stop in and uh, visit us. We know we can't do that today, but uh, how about next Sunday? So anyway, uh, you are indeed welcome. Uh, we're going to get to some announcements as we get started today. First thing I want to make an announcement about is our announcements are in a lot, lot more detail in the bulletin, and uh, we also have some other handouts about some other things, about other announcements too. And uh, so to get a, a bigger picture of uh, everything going on, uh, please get your copy of the bulletin, and uh, more information will, will be there. But I'm just going to highlight a few of the, uh, the, the more important ones here. Um, we have the 4th of July uh, parade coming up, and we need some volunteers. So uh, for, for those who are able to, we, we need you to uh, help handing out VBS flyers, Vacation Bible School, uh, during the uh, parade. So if you're interested in uh, uh, joining in that particular endeavor, uh, we're going to have a, a short informational meeting, and that will be next Sunday, July 3rd, after the morning service. So uh, that's uh, one item there. And speaking of uh, VBS, Vacation Bible School, uh, we need your help in, uh, to staff VBS and also to uh, provide some snacks. So if you are able and willing to help uh, staff VBS uh, to donate some snacks and or donate funds and purchase snacks, uh, please sign up in the sign-up sheet right outside the auditorium there. Um, there's a sign-up sheet that you can uh, uh, indicate that there. And if you need more information about VBS, uh, again, we have these uh, information flyers, so be sure to pick one up there. And if you need more information, you can contact uh, Deanna Lindsay at 630-217-8170. So those are some uh, things for the announcements. And uh, another one is that...
Please remain standing. be seated. Okay, if the men can come forward to receive our morning offering, and we'll open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another opportunity to which we can worship you, this time by uh, giving of our tithes and offerings. So be they little or be they a lot, as you have provided, uh, we thank you for the opportunity to give uh, uh, to this. And also we pray and trust that you will uh, give the leadership of this church the wisdom to uh, spend the monies properly so that the gospel can go forth, 
not only here in Westchester, Illinois and surrounding areas, but also all around the world through the missionaries that we support at those locations. So thank you again for the opportunity to give. Thank you again for all the blessings you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Today I'm going to read from Proverbs chapter through chapter two, verses one through nine. And what I'd like everybody to do, yes, please stand. I will read the verse first verse. You will all read the second verse, and at the end we get to verse nine. I'd like it if we could all say it together. My son. If you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, yes, if you can call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. He stores up wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity every good path. This is the reading from the Lord.
dismissed to your pew, and you may be seated. Before we move into the Word, uh, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes together in prayer. Um, first, let me share a couple of those requests, and then we're going to go to God and bring those requests. Um, Mr. J, as most of you are all aware, was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer. Uh, the doctor is optimistic that they caught it early. There's a CAT scan being done tomorrow. Very significant, because that'll give them a sense of knowing where things are at and therefore how best uh, they would be able to move forward regarding things. So we'd, we want to continue to be um, lifting Mr. J up in prayer. Um, I'm going to mess up the last name. I'll tell you, you guys can help me. Paul Kolopati? You guys know how to say it correctly, but Paul's the one I'm talking about. Paul ended up having an angiogram done on Friday. He had some heart issues, and they did go ahead and do an angioplasty, the balloon, uh, and they opened up um, one area. There is an additional area that they are going to be needing to look into. So please be holding up Paul in prayer. Their family has been coming and appreciate them greatly. Uh, keep them in prayer. And Waisaki, we continue to be praying. And for Jerry, um, I'm going to say the ups and downs and things that are going on, uh, continue to be praying for. And Lindsay, we are going to be regularly remembering you and uh, just lifting her up with her heart issues and lung issues and just balancing all the things that are going on. Ron Gable, uh, again, back with us, has a doctor's appointment coming up. Did you say Monday? Just shake your head yes or no. Ron, Monday, you have a doctor's appointment, right? Okay, they're, they're checking in to find what next can be done. They feel that there is something that can be done regarding the heart, but they need to investigate it more, and that is uh, coming up, so we want to be remembering him. I know that doesn't represent all of the burdens and needs that are within Westchester Bible Church, but we want to be praying for these things uh, if we could. Even as we do that, by the way, can we just say it's good to have each of you here today. I'm seeing um, Lynn Rinker here, grateful. Welcome back, I'm saying this to you, to Westchester Bible Church son Paul as well um, also um, what else did we have we had Jimmy uh, Tompkins back with us from Florida good to be able to have you here uh, worshiping with us and each one of you that is here let's go to God in prayer father we thank you for the privilege of being able to talk with you burdens of life are real and the need to be Continuing to keep our eyes on you is what it's all about. Lord, you know that, but we just say back to you that which you've been teaching us. We praise you and worship you as the almighty God that you are. We pray, Father, as we think of others that are uh, within the ministry of Westchester. And, and Lord, we lift up each and every one of these individuals. I'm thinking of a couple. I'm thinking of Mr. J., and of a CAT scan that he has that's coming up. And uh, God, I know that you're bigger than anything that we will ever encounter in life. I pray that you'd continue to give just a sense of calm and peace and uh, a realization you're Lord over everything. And so be at work in Rich's life. I think of Paul and of the angiogram that was done and, and of the angioplasty that has already been accomplished and then of the additional things that they're looking at. We don't fully understand it, but Lord, you're not looking for us to come before you with a medical description. You're God. You already know it all. We bring before you Paul and pray, Lord, that you'd be at work giving the doctor's wisdom and that you'd be ministering to him and his family in times of uncertainty which we can go through. We think of the Wysockis and Lord, of needing a heart valve replacement. And Lord, as all of those details come together, we're looking for you to make the path clear step by step. I think of Ann Lindsay. I think of Ron Gable. And though their issues are different, Lord, I bring them both before you and I pray 
God, would you be at work in their heart and their life? And, the, and Lord, all of these things, this is not just a time that we would pray this moment for all of these requests. But Father, I'm praying that a congregation of people, both here in the auditorium as well as those that would be shut-ins and watching the service, would have these requests continually be in our hearts. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of prayer, and I thank you for a work that you want to do in each and every one of our lives. To that end, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to be looking at, at actually, this is going to be a little mini-series that I'm going to do. We're looking at a portion of Scripture out of the book of Proverbs today, and then we're going to be looking at some portions of scripture that are small that are one chapter in length um, and also being able to see God's got some pretty exciting things that he wants us to be able to learn in each and every one of those we'll take on those others in the future uh, today we'll be looking into his word in the book of Proverbs a couple of individuals uh, uh, A.T. Roberts or uh, Pearson made a comment saying a proverb is a wise saying in that a few words are chosen instead of many with a design to condense wisdom into a brief form both to aid memory and stimulate study. It causes us to think. That's what Proverbs do. They, they cause us to have to be, what does it mean to me? Lord, where does it go? What's it about? Another individual writes as a preliminary, we notice that Proverbs are meant to be a practical part of our life, just as the Psalms um, are to be meaningful in our devotional life. There's pointed precepts for practical prudence. This is Jay Sidlow Baxter who made this comment um, regarding this. And just the, the practicality, that's what I want us to see, that, that it's not just some that's there in the book and we're supposed to read it because it's in the Bible. No. We need to know what God says. And the things that God says are for our benefit. You'll notice it was in the New Testament that Paul ended up saying all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. So it's going to be something we can get something out. It's for our benefit as we end up going through and reading the Scriptures and all that they say. I wonder if you could open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. And in the book of Proverbs, I'd, I'd like you to go all the way to chapter 30. I know there's a lot of good information that, that is there, but chapter 30, as we think about this message for today. The chapter, by the way, um, has a great deal to be able to say that we're not even going to cover from verse 1 all the way through um, a series of short, pithy statements that cause you to think. That, that God wants you to be thinking about Him and understanding wisdom. You know what? We live in a world where everything seems to be upside down. Has anybody noticed that in the culture? You know, I mean, I, I, I'm going to just bring it up here. The, by the way, this pulpit is not for political purposes. Can you hear me? This is for the proclamation of the Word of God. But where moral issues come up, we are not unaware and we cannot be to the place of saying, no, we can't talk about that. That The United States Supreme Court just ended up making a decision regarding Roe v. Wade. And infants, children, even in the womb. And I don't know how many lives will be lost or how many lives will be saved in the midst of decisions that are made and all that goes on but every one of those children is precious to God Amen. and ought to be precious to us. And I'm just al already reading some individuals that are just saying, you know, the exact opposite of what the Scriptures would lead us to. We need wisdom. Amen. Th this world, this country, our lives, we, we are so capable. I'm talking now to all of us. We're capable of making foolish choices. Amen. It actually was an amen moment for the rest of you too, just so that you know that. Because God is calling us to focus 
on him. And the culture, do not be surprised, do not be shocked. The culture is not focusing on God. Therefore, they're not focusing on his wisdom. Therefore, the things that they are encouraging people to do may be a total opposite of what God says. I want to know what God says. It was an amen moment. I want to know what God says. And, and as we read through the scriptures, there is wisdom in abundance all over. I'm now in Proverbs chapter 30, and, and I, I, I want to go to, um, well, first of all, just hear this. God's word is filled with illustrations that teach us practical truth. Practical truth. What does that mean? It means, yes, it's truth, and it also is something that we need to know before we make decisions regarding what we say, regarding what we do, regarding how we respond to what other people do. We, we, there are so many things that are there. And, and I'm looking at chapter 30 in the book of Proverbs, and I'm coming all the way to verse 24. In verse 24, it ends up saying there are four things that are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. Exceedingly wise. Now, again, I had just a simple little uh, title to the message. I came across this, though. The picture might not be as clear, but I wish I had come up with that title. Lessons from Bugs and a Bunny. The, the, the term uh, Coney or Hydrax also is called a rock rabbit. Uh, the second picture that is in, but I thought, who's going to forget that? So I gave it to you. There it is. Uh, what I, the pastor wished that he had had for the title was Lessons from Bugs and a Bunny in Proverbs chapter 30. So you've got your Bibles. Uh, I'm looking here uh, at the translation that I'm using, New King James. As long as it's a quality translation, all is well. There may be a couple of words that are different. There are four things that are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet they go, go forth. They, they forth all, all of them by bands. And the spider take hold of her hands and is in king's places. I do know a couple of translations have taken that concept of spider and, and believe that it's lizards. And uh, what I've come to the conclusion of is, it doesn't matter what I say, I'll just tell you that either one of those critters, the illustration is still going to end up uh, being able to be helpful for us. So I'm choosing to not get into a battle over uh, which of those that it might be. But that's what we want to go ahead and be looking at. And, and again, some of these are critters that you're used to, you know, ants. We see them whether you want to or not. They're around there, outside, inside, uh, that all takes place. The critter that's up in the upper right-hand corner, you don't see very often. Uh, during our Christian education hour, Dan was making reference to how some on the 4th of July will go up um, there in Colorado, I think he was referring to, up on a, on a, a high hill or mountain and watch the, the uh, you know, fireworks and and we don't do that here because <laughs> we don't have high hills and mountains. That's just how it works. So the, these conies, that they are in rocky, craggy places. You go to rocky, craggy places, you can find these kinds of critters, but we don't have them uh, in Illinois. And then the locust and then the spider that is there. Let's move into it. Ants. I see some of you wanting to scratch just thinking about an ant crawling on you for a moment. But can we remind ourselves that this critter happens to be a part of God's creation? Chapter 30, verse 24, uh, says, Four things are little on the earth, exceeding uh, small. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. Now, what do we know about ants? We know that they have a community that they live in. They just don't go off on their own. <laughs> you don't find the lone ant. It's just not that every ant is out there doing a job to come back to the community of all the ants. They're small, but none of these four illustrations talk about something in the insect world or even animal world that, that 
they just get into a ball and they just in the fetal position and they just have a pity party for themselves. They don't do that. They don't do that, and you shouldn't do that either. Life is going to bring challenges. Fact. I don't know you and all of what your life is, but I know that there's going to be trials and difficulties that come up in life. We need to depend on God. And God gives us illustrations just out of his world. I mean, it's, it's almost like, listen, do you want to find out about wisdom? Where do you look? Mm, pick a page. You know, because it's throughout the book. Old Testament, New Testament, we learn things that are able to be of benefit to us. And God ends up using a couple of illustrations of insignificant. I mean, we just don't think much about them at all. What could I learn from an ant? Slow down. Be willing to be humble and recognize God has illustrations for wisdom all around us. It is an amen moment. It really is for us to slow down and realize God wants us to know truth. God wants us to understand wisdom. Whenever we step down off our high horse where we feel we know better than others, there are lessons God wants us to learn. And I'm thinking about, you know, just ants. I'm thinking about these these. God's creation, and, and there's uniquenesses to them. They blend into their surroundings. And, you know, each part of God's creation has got a way that God has built them to be able to act. Some are predators, and they step out and they go where they want to go. Some have speed to outrun a predator. Some have a shell for protection. Some have strength to overpower an adversary. Some have alertness as an early warning process. Be ready, be alert regarding it all. For the ant, it's planning and working for tomorrow. I go down to Pacific Garden Mission once a month. And on numerous occasions, because the clientele changes, you know, people come in and they don't stay there forever. And you'll have different people. And I, I will say, all right. How many of you know that you have tomorrow? Raise your hand. Good job, guys. Okay, if that was an IQ test, you all passed. But that's exactly what I'm looking for from the guys or gals down there at the mission, to realize that being able to procrastinate is not wise. We don't know that we have tomorrow. So we plan for tomorrow but we live our today. We can learn that from the ant. The, the ants prepare for the future. Are you ready for eternity? Yes. I'm thinking about something that I say down there at the mission. You know, in the midst of not knowing your tomorrow, are you prepared? Are you ready? What if God took you today? For some individuals, they would come face to face with a holy God and realize they're not ready. Does that break your heart? Does that burden you? It ought to. It really should. That each of us begins to have a sense of eternity in mind the, and the preciousness of a soul and the realization that, that we all need to be providing and focusing on the future. Ants can literally give us that folk. Now, you know what? They, they could sit around and just look at the rest of the kingdom, animal kingdom, and go, man, we are so puny, and we are so weak. They don't. They don't spend all of their time only focusing on what God has not equipped them to do. They step forward and do what God has equipped them to do. Wisdom for you and for me today. God's got a plan. What are you doing to seek and to find it and understand it so that you would walk in 
in faithfulness to it. Thank you. I'm a tiny little ant that I don't think much about except I don't want to get him in my house. God's got things he wants us to be able to learn. Industrious. They really are. You know, I, I mean, I'm thinking back to the time that I was a small kid and just came across a mound. And you know what kids like to do with a mound, don't you? You know, it should be flat like everything else around it, don't you think? And, and there they are beginning to have to do all that they have to do as a result of it. Again, kids don't know what they're doing and I didn't know what I was doing either. It's another critter. It's called a coney. Now, it's also called a rock badger. It's called a hydrax or a rock rabbit I mentioned to you earlier. Uh, it's a small mammal and it lives in the rocks. It, this is native to Africa and the Middle East. Okay, so we may have some different ones that are similar um, that are here in North America, but it's not something you typically see um, that would be there. I do need to tell you, this is not the best picture in the whole world, but I took it. So there I was, you know, uh, looking at uh, uh, the remains of the synagogue at Chorazim, and, you know, it was pointed out, and I turned, and the and it stood there and let me take its picture uh, before it went away. But what do we learn about this? Well, again, they're a feeble folk. That's scriptural. We learn that right here out of the Bible. They're, they're not. It's almost like you think about a, a lamb. You ever seen a lamb and its defense mechanisms? You know, a lamb gets angry at you. Ugh. So what? What's the big thing? Its teeth were made for being able to chew grass. Its hooves were made to walk. It, it, it doesn't have defenses. I now go back to the, the concept of a, a coney, and I, and I recognize that it doesn't have all kinds of mechanisms to take on whatever would want to go after it. Aha! Where has God made it? to be able to set up their homes under a series of rocks through the craggy little inlets that can get there so that other animals could not get to it. What's the, the realization we get? It's simple, but it's important. They, I'm going to just read what I had written down. God's provision, they make their homes deep in rocky terrain where other animals can't do them. Uh, they have a, a sentry or a lookout, kind of like prairie dogs, you know, do these. The animals do as well. Uh, they let a little yip and sh everything's gone. You just don't see it anymore that would be there. Think about it. They don't depend on themselves. But they know they need protection. I've never counted it, but have you noticed through the book of Psalms, how many times the Lord is my rock and my fortress. He is my strong deliverer. Y you tracking with me? Have you seen it? I'm not making it up. It's there in the book. What that animal needs to do is to find protection because it's unable to take on all of the things that would be out there in the world. You and I we're not made to take on life on our own. Anybody fallen often enough to be able to recognize immediately the wisdom of that statement? Sadly, we sometimes have to learn the hard way, don't we? But what I could learn from that animal is that just as that animal seeks to be able to find rocky, craggy, safe ground... I need my rock. Amen. I need that relationship with God because life is hard. I, I want to tell you again, there's some churches out there, the health, wealth, prosperity churches just say, if you just believe enough, everything will be going well and fine. Listen, that is not biblical. And when it doesn't work out the way that they think it's going to, who do people blame? 
That's exactly right. They blame God. It's not God. If you are into the Word, you would realize God has resources for individuals in life in the midst of the heartache and difficulty. You and I will sometimes care for things and people and our hearts will be broken. But I look at my God and I think of how many things must grieve His heart. I need Him. I need the resources of God Himself to be able to live and function and thrive and find victory in this life. That's what it's all about. And again, you go, well, that's so simple. Everybody knows that. You think everybody's doing that? I don't either. I think that there are things that are right here in the book, if only. And by the way, I'm only looking at a couple of verses, 24 through 28. That's it uh, that I'm looking at. And yet there are lessons for me. There are lessons for you. Can I get an amen? Amen. Because the practicality of every portion of his word is so vital for us to understand. Rock Badgers, my translation says, KJV that I grew up with, Coney, are a feeble folk, yet they make their homes in the crags. That's what they do. They recognize how vital it is that they need to be able to find wisdom so that they are able to live and go forth. I showed this already. You already saw it. Isn't it a great picture? (laughs) The third picture that we have in the scriptures, it says in verse 27, the locusts have no king. So again, talking about critters that we might not be thrilled to spend an enormous amount of time around, um, but there's lessons. There's things that God wants us to be able to know. And back in that culture, uh, there clearly were ways in which they were involved in all that would be going on around them. In fact, in that area, they would have at times locusts that would come from e- Egypt and, and come across, and, and, and there could be plagues. And yes, obviously, we go to the book of Exodus and we find a unique thing that went on, but these, these locusts, they go together. This is a picture somebody took over uh, in Africa of a swarm of these locusts and and history would tell us writings that I have read would say that at times they practically blot out the sun that's how many of them would be in the swarm that are here and and the scripture says the locusts have no king that no one's in charge no one's saying all right you 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 12 million go to the left. You go to the right. You go down the middle. There's nothing that's going on, but they act together in concert to accomplish what needs to be done. Yet they advance in ranks. And I'm, again, thinking of lessons from the Bible, and, and I'm reminded of God's plan for us. Yes, we need to follow him individually, but here we are, sitting together as a church. Called out once from the world to come together. Now, God wants you to be able to walk with Him faithfully individually. Make no mistake about that. But God wants us to be involved in church family caring about one another, learning about one another. Part of the reason I'm sharing these prayer requests is so that the church family knows who I can be praying for, what burdens there are that other people are going through. It's meaningful to know that somebody's caring for me and praying for me when I'm going through a difficult time. It's good to know that as I celebrate something, others are celebrating with me. That sense of relationship, and I'll tell you what, that accountability relationship God also wants us to find within the body of Christ. It's so important that we recognize His plan for each one of us. Success is found by the strength of the the total group, not by the strength of one. Just as we see the illustration 
through the locust that would be there. Each of us comes together for a common purpose. I don't know what their purpose is outside of eating, but ours is to glorify God. All of us to glorify God. See, what, whether you're young or old, whether you're rich or poor, whether you've been in the church a long time or you just came, we have one central goal. And if it isn't your goal, would you review your life and would you consider making it your goal? Because it ought to be. That it's not about you, it's about him. Amen. When you get it, it'll allow you to begin thinking about others rather than only thinking about yourself. Amen. Contrast between the world's way and the illustrations of wisdom that we find in the scriptures regarding us. The fourth illustration. You all know what that is. You can't see it yet, but you already know what it describes. The spider. Whether it's a small ground lizard or a spider, principle is the same. A uh, spider grasps with its hands. A lizard can be grasped in the hand. I've noticed that difference in the terminology that is there. But they can be found anywhere. My son lives in Arizona, and I just need to know, not only are they there, they're there. Okay, they're just running around. I think I saw it in Florida as well when I was down that direction. I don't know how far they travel with it all, but the illustrations where they can be found. Closets, corners, attics, basements, even in king's palaces. Hence the illustration that we find in the book of Proverbs where it says, and I'm reading from my translation, the spider skillfully grasps with its hands and it is in king's palaces its persistence and its perseverance are its wisdom if you've seen let's say a spider web anywhere in your home it's not going to surprise me that you took it down and then we have some visitors come and you look up in the corner and what do you say oh man they're back again <laughs> i took care of that and then you've got some places, if you've got an attic or if you've got a basement, where you may think that nobody dwells there, but in fact, that's their home more than it's yours, you know? And, and they have all that goes on with it. But think about it. Small, weak of body, but their wisdom is to have a dependence that leads them to reach their goals. Whether they be ants whether they be conies or rock badgers or hydrax, whatever it would be called, whether they be locusts or whether they be spiders, there's something God wants them to know. And as they s depend upon him, they find and live out what he wants them to do. Have you ever felt weary? Ever felt weak? You just don't feel weak. You have a moment where you understand, I am weak. And guys, I don't want you to be offended because you all think you got the muscles and you could do whatever you need to do. Men and women, can we just put aside the masks? Uh, you know, I, I've told you guys, when we come in here, the, the masks ought to stay outside the doors. And I'm not talking about COVID. I'm talking about the way we live. How you doing? I, it happened to me two days ago. I went up to a guy. How are you doing? Yeah, fine. I then began asking a couple of questions. And there were tears. Why? Because he opened up to me and shared with me something that was really close to his heart. Amen. So many times in life, we keep it in. We convince ourselves I'm fine when the reality is I need him desperately. Amen. Come on, be a man, Pastor. I just shared this on Father's Day. I learned that the perfect man 
was Jesus. And the Bible tells me in John chapter 11, Jesus wept. There are times that life hits you upside the head and it's hard. Can I get it? Amen. Amen. Guys, please hear me. I'm not just giving a message. I'm talking to you. I am sharing with you my heart so that it would impact your life and as a result, help you this week. There are going to be difficulties that come in life. And here we find through these small little critters, illustrations that God gives us about how much we need him in the midst of life. Again, I mentioned the, the spider that would be there and the illustration of how it skillfully grasps uh, with its hands and it is in king's palaces. But, you know, beyond that, <laughs> wisdom comes from God. I want you to know it is all around us. And I don't mean, you know, I mean God is the one who wants to show us wisdom. If only we will look to him and depend on him. They're not relegated to the book of Proverbs. They're throughout the book. I already told you, pick a page. I learn through the lives of others. I learn some who have chosen wisely, even if, like Daniel, they're standing alone. But they're trusting God. I learn others who even may be kings and feel like they're in charge of everything. And I see the foolishness of the decisions that I make. You look at a Solomon, which one do you see? Yes. You see both, don't you? You see, early in his life, what did he ask for? He asked for wisdom. I'm telling you, that was the right thing to be able to do. I look at the latter part of his life and what he was told not to do, he did. How'd life go for him? Somebody, sometime, not right now, pick up the book of Ecclesiastes because I got to tell you, life stunk. Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. Life just doesn't work. Life seems like no matter what direction I go, it's a dead-end street. That's how it works when you do not follow wisdom. Amen. You know, I just feel like I, I make a decision and I, and I pay for it and, and I don't know if I could ever be able to do it the right way. You know what? Humble yourself before God. And realize that the only source of true wisdom is God himself. Amen. I need him desperately. When's the last time you said that? When's the last time that your heart cried out? And it wasn't just, yeah, I, I need wisdom too. I need wisdom desperately. James writes and tells us in chapter 1, if any of you lacks wisdom, ask of God but ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. Do not think that you're going to end up getting anything from the Lord. Would you humble yourself before God? Would you cry out to him right now and say, Lord, I think I know a lot. I know nothing of what I need to know. I need you god help me show me your wisdom i tell you that is a prayer god still hears and god still answers i'm thinking in the scriptures of back in the book of isaiah where we find this so do not fear for i am with you do not be dismayed for i am your god is that wisdom Huh? Is that something we need to know this week? Not knowing where you're going to go and what you're going to do. I need to know the promises that are in the book. I need to understand how big my God is. And whether I find it in Isaiah or I find it in the Gospel of John, whether I find it in Genesis or Book of Revelation or anything in between, seeking His wisdom, that is needs to be your goal help me lord to understand you and your ways 
and what it is that you want us to be able to do. In the book of Proverbs, we find this verse. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Meaning, you can say, I'm seeking wisdom, I'm seeking wisdom, but if you don't slow down and understand the awesomeness of our God, and if you're not humbled before Him and have an understanding, without Him I can do, help me, nothing. nothing. But through God, I can do all things. Whatever He wants me to do, He can equip me to be able to do. Based on who I am? No. Based on who He is. It's not about me. It's about Him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding how much time are you spending to get to know your God better? Well, you know, uh, uh, I, I have a devotional pastor. You know, I, I, I read a verse and then I, I pray. Wow, okay, one verse a day. That, y it's going to take you quite a while to be able to really get into the book, don't you think? I wonder whether maybe there's another plan. What do you think, guys? I mean, hypothetically, that we might say, I need more than a verse, and I need the context, and I need... I need to know who my God is. Amen. He is Chris creator. He is sustainer. He knows my thoughts afar off. He is Alpha and He is Omega. He is the beginning and He is and everything in between. Amen. I don't know how you do it. How do you live if you don't have God in the center? I can tell you this. Life is hard, and life doesn't seem to work. But I'm not saying this to put you down, and I'm not saying this to make it sound like I know so much. I'm saying this to simply recognize I need him today, Amen. and you need him today. Amen. And God's plan all along has been that we would say, Lord, I need you. I need your wisdom. Teach me your way. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. God help us. I, I, I mean sincerely, Lord, come alongside of us in the midst of our struggles and our problems and our difficulties and our anticipation of the future and not knowing what would come. Lord, we know life is hard. We live in a world that is a sinful world and it has affected people's lives and it's affected even the geography of what we see around us this is a sin-cursed world, even with its beauty. Lord, how much we need you. I think of how our life is affecting the lives of others. We are a testimony to others that are around us, whether it's good or it's bad, but our life is being seen by others. I think of your illustrations to today of an ant. An insignificant, small, little ant. You've got lessons for me from that ant. I think, Father, of the coney, and I think of the locusts, and uh, I think, Father, of, 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 of spiders or, or of small uh, salamanders and and I recognize you've actually got lessons for me all around me. I'm just not paying attention. I'm busy trying to live my life. Oh God, forgive us for our self-centeredness. Cause us to seek you above all else. To look to you for wisdom, to seek your way rather than ours. And then, Lord, may you get all the glory when you begin using us in ways that we could not have imagined to bless the lives, to touch the lives, to convict the lives of others around us. Teach me your way, O oh Lord. We pray this together in Jesus' precious name and God's people said, Amen.
please stand as we sing, Teach Me Thy Way, O Lord. Dismissed.